Hello everyone, Retro Gamer Das here, and welcome to another brand new video and the start of another new gaming series, which we will hopefully do every week. This one is called Late to the Party, and it's basically an opportunity for me to cover games that I've missed first time around, games that I just wasn't aware of when they came out, and games that you may not have played yet. And you know, this this is a chance for you to rectify that by joining the party, jumping on the bandwagon and saying, yay, isn't this game amazing? So the first game we're gonna look at is basically a brand new Mega Drive game. And that's brand new as in, it literally came out in 2019. So, and it's a bloody good one as well. So you may be aware of it already, but in case you're not, this is Xeno Crisis. It's by the Bitmap Bureau. It's a top-down arena shooter, and you need to be playing this because it is really, really, really good. Luckily, there are other ways beyond buying the Mega Drive version. You can basically get it on Dreamcast. The Neo Geo AES version is on the way, I believe. I don't think it's out just yet. And there's even options to play it on Steam, on Switch, on PS4, and on Xbox One. So basically you have got absolutely no excuse for them not being part of the party. So what we'll do now is we'll take a look at the gameplay video that I've put up and we'll go from there. I'll put links in the actual comments below so you can basically order this game if you like what I see, but I'm pretty sure you are going to enjoy it. Okay, let's get on with the show. Okay then, and welcome to the Bitmap Bureau's excellent Xeno Crisis. Believe it or not, this came out in 2019, and it's a brand new shoot 'em up for the Mega Drive. You can buy it on Xbox Live, Steam, Switch, and PS4, but ultimately, this is the version I went for. You can buy it for £55 for a complete set. Alternatively, there is a cartridge version um, on its own for 40 I believe and you can also get it on Dreamcast and I think a Neo Geo version is incoming but um, I'm actually gonna go for this one so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the difficulty and change it to easy because it's it's actually quite hard just so I can show you a little bit of the game and um, for those who don't know this is effectively an arena shooter which basically means that you navigate a single screen and you blow the hell out of anything which is stupid enough to fall into your gunfire. It's designed to work on both a three button pad and a six button pad, but the six button pad is better because it largely allows you to keep to a, a four way direction. So you can basically, you've got up, down, left, right for your shooting like you would have with a game like Smash TV on the SNES or Robotron 2884 on Arcade. Um, Robotron, as we all know, is probably one of the greatest twin stick shooters of all time. But in all fairness, this is pretty bloody good. It's got an interesting style, which um, I like to call Amiga, in that um, it's very metallic -y. It kind of reminds me of the Bitmap Brothers games, which is possibly where the Bitmap Bureau name comes from. Who knows? I'll have to ask the guys one day. But, um, it's just a great looking game, I mean, look at it. Absolutely superb soundtrack as well. In fact, the only downside with the soundtrack is that sometimes the gunfire from your weapons drowns it out occasionally. Now, one of the things you will notice is that as I'm shooting things down, I'm losing my bullets. Luckily, if you pick up those boxes there, you can refresh and get on with the show. The show being killing as many aliens as possible. There's little dudes along the way which you can pick up as we just saw. I've run out of weapons. And those dog tags, you'll need those later on because they basically allow you to buy things in the shop at the end of each stage. And um, and that's that's pretty much it. I mean, it's very it's very simple from a gameplay point of view. Uh, there's very few mechanics to it. It is literally point and shoot. But the shooting, the shooting is so damn satisfying. Everything everything just seems to explode as soon as it comes into contact with your weapons, which is really really nice. 
And this is really nice as well, a gigantic boss. I mean, look at it, look at the size of it. So I will probably die because even though it's on easy, I am not great and I'm trying to talk and play at the same time because um, I just don't record audio afterwards. I probably should. So that's something else that you can add to, add to the request of things to make the channel better. Oh, one more hit as you can see there on the big part and I'm dead. So we'll go into a continue. Nice fade to black and white there. And let's carry on. You only get a limited amount of continue, so it is quite a tricky game. It's gonna take you a while before you um, complete it. And one of the things I forgot about is you've obviously got this roll. The roll is quite good because um, you're briefly invulnerable when you're going through bullets. So again, it's a good way of basically keeping your distance from enemies, and I probably could have done with using it while we were playing. Nice little cutscenes to set the mood. I mean, this, this is largely the work of an incredibly small team, including Mike Tucker. And, you know, you, re you really have to commend what they've, what they've achieved. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just absolutely brilliant. You know, there's not much to the plot, but, you know, <laughs> that, that doesn't really matter. So as I mentioned before, this is basically where your dog tags come in handy and you can upgrade and there's a variety of useful things. So we'll increase health, because obviously why not? Increase the power of your gun. In fact, if I re remember correctly, the, the two characters do have different starting stats. Right, what do we want here? Do we want to increase our grenade power? Why the, no, I can't because I haven't got enough. So let's go with increasing your ammo. And again, that basically means that you can go that little bit further, you get extra bullets before you need to refill. So here we are now in the facility. And the enemies come thick and fast. They don't swarm you quite so much like they do in games like Smash TV, but they certainly keep you on your toes. Pick up the POWs. And obviously, as you can see, my I've now got around 125 bullets before I need to refill up. That little card is basically used to get into one of the doors from earlier on in the game. And you will find that there's a little bit of backtracking, but in all fairness, the game is so fast paced that it doesn't really matter because you you only spend, you know, not even a minute in most of these levels. Now, one of the things that I would have liked is that there isn't an option to basically respawn enemies when you go into new sections, because that way you could have really gone for like um, a screw attack. But, Again, the, these are these are minor quibbles. I, I feel I feel almost churlish saying that sort of stuff because this really is a phenomenal shooter. As, in fact, I would go as far as to say that this is probably the best arena shooter you can get on the Mega Drive. I mean, if you if you compare this to games that came out at the time like Smash TV on the system, there really is no com compest this. Compass comparison. This basically leaves them dust. It's it's just it's just amazing. Again, as you can see now, it is starting to get a little bit trickier. They are starting to crowd on you, and that only continues as the um, as the levels as you get further on into the levels. So here's another boss. You've got to look out for his tail spikes on this one. But again, it's. It's, it's pretty pretty rudimentary boss pans, so they do become quite easy to learn. But that doesn't mean that I'm gonna make a pig's ear of this. Because as we all know now, professionalism is not in my wheelhouse, and that professionalism extends to the playing of classic arcade games, or arcade games, in a, new games in a classic style. So it's kind of, kind of like a shark, isn't it? A shark snake. So I don't know what fevered nightmares came up with that, but there you go. Again, fade to black. 
love that punch. You really, really feel that punch. And let's um, let's hope we can finish this off. I've been doing everything I can to tweak the videos. You can probably see that there's a tiny, there's a tiny little bit of horizontal, vertical roll, horizontal roll. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Um, I'm shooting at 159th of a frame second. I think my PVM have act has actually got a bit of a weird refresh on it. So um, I'm doing the best I can, guys. Okay then, so we're basically reached the final stage that I'm gonna be showing you now. And um, as you're gonna start to see, the stages are getting a little bit harder to clear now. And I'm, um, I, I'm really not very good at this, so rather than embarrass myself any further, I think this is probably a good time to call it a day. So, um, thanks for watching this playthrough of Xeno Crisis. It really is probably one of the best Mega Drive arena shooters, if not the best arena shooter you can get on the system. And, um, it's certainly worthy of your hard earned cash. So this is Retro Gamer Daz. As always, if you do like the videos, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I do try and reply to all the comments. And um, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the video, and I will be back for Shmup Saturday. I will see you then. Take care.